another example of drawing shear and moment diagrams for a frame. In this case, we're going to have a compound frame, okay? And if you remember, a compound frame is similar to a compound beam in the sense that we're going to have the presence of an internal hinge, okay? So in this case, we're going to have uh, this compound frame with an internal hinge. So this uh, vertically oriented roller is going to be at A, and then we have a, a hinge at B and a fixed connection at C. And on the span AB, we're going to have a 20 kilonewton point load. Here's this and this. And this is going to be spaced out as 1.5 meters and another 1.5 meters. And then on the span BC, we have a uniform distributed load of five kilonewtons per meter. And then the horizontal dimension is four meters. So um, just like with our other examples, we have to start by solving for the external support reactions. But in order to do that, since this is a compound system, we have to disassemble things at the internal hinge first. So under solution, I'm gonna say uh, to solve for externals, begin by disassembling at B, at the internal hinge at B. So I'm gonna show this system disassembled and uh, I'm gonna draw them, draw both free body diagrams next to each other. So I'm gonna say that this is AX, okay, then remember that was a sideways roller. And don't be confused, remember disassembling is not the same as doing method of sections. So we are disassembling a B, we're not making a cut section. All right, this was 20 kilonewtons. And then of course, uh, drawing my free body diagrams properly, I always need to include my dimension lines, 1.5 meters and 1.5 meters. And what becomes visible when we've disassembled this uh, joint at B? Well, I'm gonna have a uh, BY here, and I'm gonna have a BX. Now, remember, technically speaking, I don't know uh, the directions of, of any of these things that I just drew in red. I'm assuming those directions right now. So looking at the other side of this disassembled system, we have the horizontal member that's supporting five kilonewtons per meter over four meters, okay? And we have BX going in the opposite direction here, and we have BY oriented here. Same magnitude, opposite direction at that internal hinge. And then at the fixed connection, we're gonna have a CY, a CX, and an MC. Again, all of these directions are being assumed right now. So um, to get started, we need to start with the free body diagram that, that only has three unknowns. We cannot start with the free body diagram of BC because as you can tell, we have five unknowns. We have to start with the free body diagram AB in this case because that's the one with three unknowns. So um, let's get started with, with this, with free body diagram uh, AB. So, oh, let me scroll a little bit. So starting with free body diagram, a, B, F, B, D, A, B. We can clearly tell that by symmetry, by symmetry, A, X is the same as B, X, and that equals 10 kilonewtons pointing to the left. Okay, we should be able to pretty pretty easily recognize that. Okay, if you can't see that symmet that symmetry um, attribute, then you know draw write out your equilibrium equations and do the calculations. But um, ax equals bx. 
equals 10 kilonewtons pointing to the left. So we can kind of check that off. Also, we can say by some of the forces in the y direction in this free body diagram, we should be able to tell that by equals zero because nothing is is in the uh, y direction right here. All right. So that actually knocks out that piece pretty smoothly. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is move on to the free body diagram of BC. FBD BC. So looking at free body diagram BC, uh, we said BY is zero, but we do have a BX. So um, how about I just redraw this for convenience sake? Oops. So here's my distributed load, five kilonewtons per meter. And we figured out what uh, BX was. So in this case, it's 10 kilonewtons pointing to the right because in free body diagram AB, it was pointing to the left. BY is zero. And now what are we left with? Well, we're just left with finding CY, CX, and MC. Well, at this point, uh, this, and don't forget your dimension line, this is four meters. At this point, it's pretty much just like a cantilever beam, right? Um, put my little circle there. Uh, because BY is zero, um, so, so here we can, we can clearly tell that CY must be equal to 20 kilonewtons. Now, if you're wondering where I got, hopefully you can look at it and, and see where I got that from, but I got that from just saying, you know, some of the forces in the Y direction, I got negative five kilonewtons per meter times four meters plus CY, oopsie, plus CY. And I move CY to the other side of the equation and I get CY is 20 kilonewtons reacting up. Can you look at this and tell what MC is going to be? Well, let's see if we can. MC should be equal to 5 kilonewtons per meter times 4 meters gives us 20 kilonewtons, which is located right here in the middle. And that's located a distance 2 meters away. So that gives us 40 kilonewton meters. Now that should be reacting, uh, MC should be reacting to what's being applied. So really um, it should be oriented clockwise, right? Because even though I drew MC going counterclockwise, the applied loading is going uh, counterclockwise, which means that the reaction MC should be reacting clockwise right there. Okay. So, um, again, if you can't see that, write out your equilibrium equations and you should come to the same conclusion. Also, just by looking at this, we should be able to see that CX is 10 kilonewtons pointing to the left. All right. So uh, we pretty much have everything now. We should be ready to draw our shear and moment diagrams. Now, um, let's, let's do that, okay? Let's do that. Uh, now, at this point, my question is, do we need to use method of sections at any part of this uh, to, to finish off getting some internal loads? I'm gonna check off some of these while I'm up here. Boom, 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 boom. Do we need to use method of sections like we did in the other frame examples to kind of move around and um, calculate some internal loads? Well, we could, I mean, we could do what we did in the previous examples and go infinitely below uh, B and inf infinitely to the right of B. But if we do that, we're actually gonna be calculating the same things that we just did by disassembling. So we wanna emphasize method of sections and disassembling at an internal hinge are not the same thing, but they are similar. And a lot, and sometimes they can get you some of the same things that you're looking for depending on the problem. So we don't really need to do method of sections here because, you know, if I cut, if I made a cut section 
right here, infinitesimally below B, well, I'm just going to get the same BY and BX that I just calculated because that's what's, that's what's there, okay? And then the same thing goes with uh, if I make, made an infinite cut to the right of B. So at this point, I can, I can pretty much reassemble this and go to town and draw my, my shear moment diagrams. So here I'm gonna say shear diagram, and this is gonna have units of kilonewtons, and I'm gonna try to draw this real nice. All right, and I'm just gonna go left, uh, left to right. Um, we need to clearly define our coordinates. I'm going to call that positive shear and positive x for the first member. And uh, ooh, don't forget your just to for proper purposes draw that internal hinge. We're going to call that positive shear and positive x for the for the horizontal member. So um, so first thing we encounter is a x. What was a x earlier? A x was ten kilonewtons and so was bx okay so i'm gonna jump to the left by 10 kilonewtons and then we had a constant segment and then we encountered that 20 kilonewton point load which should have taken us to the opposite side so that's like negative 10 and then we had a constant segment and then the BX value that we calculated up here, right? This BX value right here, which we calculated as 10 kilonewtons pointing to the left, that's what's gonna close that shear diagram off. Boom, oh, oh. Uh, right there. And there's our shear diagram for the vertical member. What about the horizontal member? Okay, so let's take a look at that horizontal member. We said that BY was zero, okay? We, we figured that out earlier, BY was zero. Notice there is no BY here. So going from left to right, I'm actually gonna start by uh, just encountering the, the load distribution. And remember the area under the load distribution gets us the change in shear. So we're gonna say five times four is 20 kilonewtons. Five kilonewtons per meter times four meters, 20 kilonewtons. It is pointing down, which means we are going to head in the quote unquote negative direction here. So this is gonna go down like this to negative 20. And then we encounter CY, which pushes us back up to zero. Boom, right there, okay? And this is gonna be our shear diagram, okay? That's our shear diagram. Now, what about the moment diagram? Our moment diagram is gonna have units of kilonewton times meters. And here's what I'm gonna do for this. You know what, I'm gonna keep it assembled. I'm gonna keep it assembled. You know, we mentioned uh, in the previous examples that we could kind of separate the members apart just so we can kind of visualize things a little bit better. We could do that, we could do that with this as well. I'm just gonna not do it just for illustrative purposes, but know that you can. So we had this, uh, we had the sign convention in the shear diagram um, a certain way. So it's a good idea to match your sign convention with your moment diagram. There we go. And uh, we had a roller at A, so moment should start at zero. And then we need to compute the area beneath the shear diagram. Remember the area under the shear diagram gets us moment, right? Not quite, it gets us the change in moment. So we're gonna have 10 kilonewtons times 1.5 meters. So uh, that should get us a value of 15 uh, kilonewton meters. 15 kilonewton, I just punched that in my calculator, not gonna lie. It's 
Sometimes I don't trust myself. <laughs> 15 kilonewton meters, and in, in, based on this drawing, this is positive shear, so that's gonna give us a positive moment. So we're gonna linearly increase right here. That's a line right there at 15. And then we have a negative shear area right here of also negative 10 times 1.5, so negative 15. So that brings us back down to zero right here. So this is our moment diagram for that member. What about the horizontal member? Well. Uh, we have an internal hinge here, right? Internal hinge, so it's free to rotate. Notice we did not have an internal moment there. We notice that there's no internal moment here because an internal hinge is free to rotate. Thus, it will not develop an internal moment at that specific point. What we need to get is the area under this shear diagram that will get us the change in moment. So we're gonna get the area of that triangle, which is one half, times 20 kilonewtons times four meters, which is 40. And this is a negative area right here, right? That's a negative area, so it gets us a moment that is numerically negative. So what's gonna happen is we're going to have a moment diagram that does something like this. It's gonna move down here oops, to negative 40, okay? And then we hit M sub C, our moment reaction that we calculated earlier. Now, 40 kilonewton meters going clockwise. Remember, according to chapter 10 of the book and from your Mecha Materials course, a clockwise couple, did I say counterclockwise a minute ago? Whatever, I meant clockwise, <laughs> clockwise. A clockwise couple moment causes a jump in the positive direction in the moment diagram, a jump upwards in the moment diagram. So this moment diagram is going to jump up and close to zero. And that is our moment diagram. Now, a couple of uh, notes to put here. These two segments right here are linear segments. This is quadratic, okay? This is quadratic and specifically it's concave down. So how do we know that? Well, a couple things we need to keep in mind. When we had constant shear segments, constant shear gives an integral of a constant is a linear function. So that gives us linear segments here for shear. When you have a linear function, a linear function, the Integral of a linear function gives you a quadratic function, all right? More specifically, this linear shear uh, diagram right here is a decreasing function. Notice it is decreasing. Decreasing linear functions, uh, when you take an integral of them, give you a concave down quadratic function, which is what we see here. Now, the next thing that we wanna make sure we understand is, um, is again, why does it start at zero? How do we know, how do we know that this moment diagram doesn't do something like this instead? Well, the reason why it's not this shape is because it's got to start at zero. It's got to start at zero here, right? Because that's an internal hinge and internal hinges don't support internal moments. They're free to rotate. So moment is zero there. It starts at zero and then it moves down to uh, the negative 40 value, okay? So um, that concludes this example of shear moment diagrams of a compound frame.